Thank you, Andy, for an incredible story. I cannot imagine your pain. Now, I was just introduced as CEO of the Milwaukee Jewish Federation, a job I'm very proud to hold. But I want to tell you that I came from some different jobs before I came here. I studied to be a rabbi. My father was a rabbi, Holocaust survivor. There was a lot of pain, a lot of intimacy in feelings as I was raised. I also was a diplomat. The difference between talking to a congregant that may come and talk something private to their rabbi and talking to a foreign minister about something horrible that's happening in their country oddly raised the same questions. They're tough questions. How did this happen? How is it bad things happen? How could neighbors like Gemma and Robbie, or in Bosnia, two best friends, live next to each other, be friends, and the next day rape or kill each other? How could someone be so sad or so desperate as to want to leave life? Why do we quickly go to anger and rage and hatred and violence? <clears throat> Why do people lose their way? Why do they lose their soul? Guns, violence, murder does more than kill people. It kills an entire environment. It kills a society. So after studying to become a rabbi and being an advocate for social justice and being a diplomat, I came back to Wisconsin where I had raised my two daughters to this great job. But I have to tell you, I came back to Wisconsin I hardly recognize. So segregated, so polarized, so angry. And I came back <clears throat> because I knew something like this would happen. Three weeks ago, I became a grandma. <laughs> Henry has given me a more intense perspective on life. I will love him with all my heart. I will probably spoil him rotten. I mean, I aim to. I will join his parents in teaching mutual respect, open doors that may be hard for him to open, teach kindness, values. Henry now is simple. He's brilliant, <laughs> but he's free of bias. I want to protect, protect him now from messy diapers, from hunger, from fear of falling. I want to help him when he makes a mistake or he fails. I want to watch my children, who I raised with such important values, pass them on to him. Values of mutual respect, of loving kindness, of justice, of humility, of mercy, of patience, of commitment to fairness, to compassion. We all want the world to be better for our having been here. And I want to help Henry make the world better for his having been here. But the grim reality is we cannot protect our children from all these forces, mental illness, bullying, video games, social media, political rhetoric, availability of guns. We do the best we can. We love them. We teach them those values. And we set them free in stages. But with this especially heated political conversation or rhetoric now, we deserve better. We have to work to de-escalate the rhetoric, the anger, the hatred, the incivility. For Henry's sake, let's not be paralyzed. Paralyzed from fear, 
or paralyzed in trying to fix and mend this fractured world.